So once again, you can use the Move tool or you can do Edit, Copy, go to your new document, Edit, Paste. And then uh, next up is the Magnetic Lasso tool, which I think is a lot of fun. So I'm going to close Polygon tool, go to Magnetic Lasso tool. They want you to select these two little keys with the Magnetic Lasso tool. So Magnetic Lasso tool is just underneath the Polygon Lasso tool right here. It's got a little magnet for the symbol. For this one, you um, position the cursor close to the edge of the object. Then you just kind of start clicking. You just click and hold. And what happens, you, you do need to kind of stay close to the edge of the object you're trying to select. Um, but it will, um, it will sort of hug the corners, basically. Um, it'll hug the corners for you and um, kind of solves the problem with the with the basic lasso tool where your your cutout edge is a little bit rougher. So notice I have only selected one key and not the other. Well the reason for that is that I need to make a change up here in my menu so that I can add the other selection to my current selection. Because if I started to click around this now I would lose this selection. So if I just clicked over here see now I've completely made a mess and lost my original selection. So that's no good. We don't want that. Um, and if you ever get something you don't want, just um, just go back. Just um, go back to where you were by hitting Control alt z um, And that's an undo. So then uh, what we need to do is we need to toggle on Add to Selection so that we can add this second key to our current selection. And again, you just click and drag around the outer edge of your of the object that you want to pick, and it will sort of hug the corners. If it doesn't quite work right, just hit backspace, um, and it will um, undo those last um, selection points. And you can maybe um, pull it out a little further, a little wider, to help s make that selection a little better. Okay. So I'm then going to take that selection. Again, I'm going to use the Move tool to just click and drag it into my um, new document. Close out that document. And then what's next? The Magic Wand tool. Okay. Um, magic Wand tool is lots of fun and, and this is an optimal example of a, of a good use of the Magic Wand tool. Uh, it really works best when you have plain white or just plain colored backgrounds that don't have a lot of detail or change in color or change in value in them. So if you've got, you know, I don't know, a, a balloon up in a sky and you just want to select the balloon, use the magic wand tool to select the sky. Okay, so see how I just I just took the magic wand tool which here right right next to the the um uh, lasso tools just underneath the move tool. It looks like a little magic wand. Um pick up this tool and just hit, hit click anywhere in the white space and you will immediately select all of the white background and need an, in the, and leave a really neat nice outline around your um, around your foreground object. So now you're probably wondering okay well I've selected the background how do I select the foreground? Well it's pretty simple. Go to select inverse handy little command that basically just flips your selection from the foreground to the background. So now you notice I have the pen selected and all I had to do was click on the background and select and choose select inverse to invert my selection from the background to the foreground and now I have my pen selected for me pretty easily. Okay, That's a really um, really powerful um, tool. The same, I would say, is true of the uh, magic, uh, the quick selection tool, which is the last one to the, of the of the selection tools. It's located um, in the same palette, same menu as the magic wand tool. Um, so, with the quick quick selection tool, you can choose the brush size. Um, same thing with the magic wand tool. You can choose the brush si size. Um, you here these are the similar same commands where you have just sele um, new selection, add to selection, subtract from selection. Um, so those are ways to 
refine your selection. And this one is just kind of like a combination magic wand tool slash magnetic lasso tool, I think, because it, it does sort of hug the corners, but as you can see, sometimes it can overdo it. So you can go back and you can click on subtract from selection to reselect the, that magic marker, get it back into your selection, go back to add selection, add to selection to uh, fix that. And as you can tell, I'm selecting once again the background. Um, it's always best to select the part that is the most uniform. Um, that's just easier with these um, smart selection tools. It's just easier for the computer to distinguish the edges if you choose a nice flat um, background. So see now I have the background selected and I just toggled between the plus and the minus uh, add to subtract from till I got it right. Um, and I had to, you know, tweak it, play with it a little bit. You can play with the brush size if you want to. Um, so, so play with that a little bit till you get a nice selection of the background, and then just do the same thing with the magic wand tool. Choose select inverse to um, select the foreground set of markers, and then once again go back to your move tool, which is V, and click and drag it into your open document. Okay close that out, done with that. Okay, so now we're down to just arranging things um, in our open document. It's helpful to open up layers, to view the layers, so I'm going to expand my dock and um, expand my layers uh, palette so that I can see what's going on in my layers. And you notice that when I placed each of these objects, it created a new layer for each object that I uh, drug into my document. So the markers are here on their own layer, the pen is on its own layer, the keys are another layer, and I can click through each of these to see what I have. Okay, so you need to make it look like the example uh, assignment, which basically means you need to think about um, how, how you're arranging things. Um, so you have to select the layer that the object is located on in order to move it. Um, let me make this a little smaller so we can see what's going on. So we need to position the the uh, s blue screen. Again, with the Move tool selected, I'm selecting the layer with the blue screen, and then I'm just going to click and drag and move it around until I have it set where I want it. And then um, the light bulb, you notice, is currently located behind the blue screen. We can't really see it, so we need to put it in front of the blue screen. Well, I think the best way to solve that problem is just to realize that the blue screen is the thing that you want on the bottom layer because everything else is in front of it. So I'm going to reselect that blue screen and I'm just going to click in the layers palette and drag to put the blue screen on the bottom layer. So I can drag it around and you see how it, it shows me where it's going to be placed with that darker gray line, darker thicker gray line. So if I click and drag it to the bottom of my layers, um, down is bottom, up is top, then it puts it behind everything else and we can see all the other layers. Then it's just simply a matter of clicking on a layer, um, again with the move tool, you have to use the move tool, Mo positioning the object, click another layer, position the object, um, Click the next layer, position the uh, light bulb in the top left, click on the next layer, position the keys, little overlapping the frame, just trying to make it look like the example, um, moving the marker just over a little bit, and then I think these felt tip markers go in the bottom right corner like that. So um, the only layer that we needed to move was the screen layer to put it on the bottom so that everything else was in front and all the rest is is fine, looks fine. If you want to reposition, you can. Um, and so that's it. That's all you need to do. Save this as a Photoshop document to file save. Make sure you shave, save it in the format of .psd, which is um, Photoshop document, um, so that that way all of your layers are intact when you save.